What's up, you guys? It's Mr. Sorrells back with tutoring with Mr. Sorrells. And today I'm gonna be just running over some tips, some tricks, some keywords, some questions, some concerns about our cell energy and DNA test coming up on Monday, okay? So if you will, grab your review. If you haven't filled it out yet, be sure to do that because this is the best resource you guys are going to get, okay? So fill that out, study it, make sure that you guys are keeping up with it as well because your teachers might ask you to turn it in on Monday for some credit, okay? So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's look at number one. We got this big old glob right here. Now. If I don't know what that is off the top of my head, I see a little word out to the side and it says chloroplast, okay? Where can we find chloroplast? Can we find it in us? Can we find it in animals? No, we can only find it in plants, correct. So whenever I see a chloroplast, ding, 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 my brain should go off and think plant, plant, plant. So if you see chloroplast, you guys automatically know that those are a plant organelle. So photosynthesis, okay? Down here, on the second one, it says mitochondria. Oh, I know the difference between the mitochondria is, doesn't it look like a brain, like a human brain? And then we got the ATP coming. Now, it's a bunch of hints, so be looking, because that tells you when ATP is coming out, what is that doing? Cellular respiration. So know the difference between your mitochondria that almost looks like a human brain and your chloroplast that almost looks like a living plant. All right, as we continue, why must there be an equal number of atoms on both sides of the equation in biology? This one threw you guys through a loop, and I'll keep it short, sweet, and simple. They must be balanced. Both sides must be balanced. They must equal out to each other, and you must be able to prove it, okay? Let's keep going. Whenever it asks you for the chemical equation, that is going to be the long, hard, complicated one. So, for example, carbon dioxide. That would, I don't know if you guys can see that as well as I thought you would be able to. Come on, let's move, let's move. This is the chemical equation, all right? If it asks you for it in words, you'll write it out. You know you'll spell it out. The chemical equation is numbers and letters, okay? Let's keep moving, because this is going to be short, quick, and sweet. Know the difference between your products and your reactants, your reactants and your products, okay? Now, what did we teach you guys? The reactants are on the left-hand side of the equation. The products are going to be on your right-hand side of the equation, okay? What reactants are what goes in, product is what comes out, okay? Which organisms carry out cellular respiration? Now, contrary to photosynthesis, all eukaryotic cells carry out cellular respiration. Remember that, both plants and animals. Another one, good one, good one, good one. What does ATP stand for? Say it with me, adenine triphosphate. Adenine triphosphate, ATP. Another one that you guys really were kind of iffy on, number 15, where is the highest amount of energy found in ATP? That will be found in the mitochondria. That's where all the magic happens. That's where it gets popping at, okay? And then it asks how is energy released from ATP, and that's going to be through the end of that ATP molecule, and we know that as the PPP phosphate bonds, okay? So just know that when those phosphate bonds are broken, that is when ATP is released, okay? Let's keep moving, let's keep moving. It says DNA is an example of which biomolecule? Remember we spelled it out. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. The NA in DNA stands for nucleic acid. That is the biomolecule. So if we know the biomolecule is nucleic acids, what must be the monomer? 
Nucleotides, correct, correct, correct. So keep that in mind. It tells you everything you need to know about DNA, where you can find it, what it means, what its function is, what its biomolecule is, what its nucleotide is, all in the name. You guys, remember, the sugar phosphate backbone is exactly that. Just the sugar, the phosphate, and the backbone. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. We know that our base pairs, our complementary base pairs, are apple trees, cars garage, tree apples, garage cars, right? And what do those stand for? A to T, C to G, G to C, T to A. All right? Just know those combination. Know those pairings. Know what they go with. What shape is the DNA molecule in? A twisted ladder. Maybe a double-stranded helix? Correct, correct, correct. Know the three different components of a nucleotide. We got our phosphate, our fish. We got our shake your sugar dioxy, okay? And we got our nitrogen bases out there to the connecting us to our base pairs, all right? Why is DNA important? Why is order important? Well, DNA tells you everything you need to know about yourself. How tall you go be, what color your eyes are going to be, how long or short your hair might be. So that's why DNA and the genetic coding is so important. And the order matters because sequencing is the difference between us and a frog. Now, I know you guys have ran, we're 98% frog. No. Frogs also share ATCG, but where the difference comes in between you and a reptile is the order and the sequence. So where a frog might read T-A-G, you might read A-T-C, okay? We'll keep it short, sweet, and simple. So list the four nitrogen bases. Come on with me, say it with me. Say adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. There we go. Those are easy. Keep those in mind. Look at this big chart. Look at this big chart. This is a big old, long, complicated chart that we don't feel like doing, but it is easy, okay? Take a look at it with me. Looking at the chicken up here, top part, I see 21.8% adenine. So what can I already fill in? That's correct. Thymine. Thymine. A's goes with T's. So then when I get over here to C and I see 28.2%, I know that C goes with G. So those two got to match up as well. And we got 28.2 for both. And then you're done. Now you done filled the chart out, okay? Now take a look at it down here where it says 43% for dog, all right? The dog says it is 43% cytosine. All right, so knowing that C goes with what? G. G will be 43% as well. All right, now this is where we got to do a little math. What's 43 plus 43? Mr. Shane, 86. Boom, so now we subtract that 86 from 100. What do we get? 24. We divide that 24 into twos. Give 12 the A, give 12 the T, bow, equals up to 100. Remember, A plus T plus C plus G must all add up to 100%, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And we're almost done, you guys. All right. In DNA replication, the enzyme that unzips DNA, that unzips that unzips the DNA strand is going to be called helicase. Helicase. It unzips, spreads out, diverges those DNA strands. And the one that helps us bring it back all together to make something new and improved, that's going to be your polymerase. You guys, 
That's it for tutoring with Mr. Surreals. I hope you guys are ready for your test on Monday. Be sure to fill this out, study it, and go over it over the weekend because it's there to help you guys, all right? Just how I am. So I hope you guys have been helped. I hope you guys do great on your next test, and I look forward to seeing those scores. You guys have a great weekend.